Hey, hope you had a good lunch and a good time together so far at the first uh, with your with your session. I don't know if it was your first one, but here we go. We're going to talk about um, interpreting or performance practices for Negro spirituals. Um, Way Over in Beauty Land, which is a book that Andre Thomas wrote about the uh, interpretation and, and historical uh, facts about the spiritual, gives this quote, it is not enough to know simply the music. One must know the culture of the folk music as well as the history of its people, but most importantly, the music must be sung with respect of that culture. And that's for all music that is not our Native American well, not, sorry, that is not our Mer American music, okay? Um, and, I th and I was guilty of this uh, beginning, as a beginning teacher. Um, there was a, and, and this is a little soapbox moment, so uh, there was a, a period where we may have programmed a spiritual just because we needed a great closer. <coughs> or we may do a gospel arrangement because we think the church would really be excited about it, okay? Without giving that piece of music due diligence. <coughs> and due diligence means not finding out every single thing you can and to be a quasi-expert, but you got to dip into the Latin American culture if you're doing a Latin piece. You got to dip into the black culture or the black church uh, culture. If you're going to perform this music with respect, okay? Um, now again, that's not finding out every, every I mean, we, we don't have time to do that, okay? But the beautiful thing of COVID was that we were forced to look at people on the screen, right? And that is something that has lasted that I'm still adopting now from uh, our uh, shutdown in COVID is reaching out to people. Dear Elaine Hagenberg, hey, we're doing this piece. Can you talk to us? Sure. Here's a Zoom. There it is. Okay. Um, Latin friends of mine. Hey, I don't understand this or can you talk to my kids about this. Can you give, can you send me a five minute video that I can play in class? You're finding out more, okay? You're finding out more. All right, off the soapbox. So we're gonna talk about the history. Hopefully most of y'all know the history that is still evolving for all of us, okay? Um, but just to share some pictures here in silence. So in 1619, the first group of Africans landed on American shores in Jamestown, Virginia, about 60 miles from my hometown, Great Virginia Beach. And part of, it was uh, as a, a gift that maybe some of y'all got to, either uh, 23andMe or Ancestry.com or something like that. And it's like, ooh, you know, it was such a buzz. It's like, okay, I gotta do this, gotta find out what I am. So I got that as a gift, and um, 
I figured that my uh, African heritage probably came from my father uh, because he was a native of the Eastern Shore area, Prince Anne County, Virginia. Um, and uh, so that's where our family was. So I just had, knew it was dad. Um, but to my surprise, you think it's, it was for my mom. My mom was a native North Carolinian. Um, and it comes to, uh, I, I found out that I am close to 90% African, 86%, 86 and some change. And I was like, oh my gosh. What? I was expecting 50, 60, not 86. <coughs> so I said, this must come from mama. Has to come from mama. Native Carolinian, probably, you know, great, great grandparents that came over um, and were slaves in North Carolina. And even during the time, I would say the, uh, during uh, the, uh, the 40s and the 50s, my grandparents were sharecroppers. Horrible life, whether you're black or white. Um, and so that's, that's, that's the history that I got from my mom. And I realized, oh my goodness, it must have come from my mom. From my dad, I get my little bit of English, I get my little bit of Asian. Um, but that was very, very surprising to me. So hopefully you have found out a little bit more about your culture. Um, but this was very interesting to me that in 1619, 403 years ago, is when it happened. These Africans hail from the west coast of Africa. So west coast countries. Can you name one? Sierra Leone. Uh-huh. Cameroon, Sierra Leone, Ghana, Senegal, okay, Ivory Coast, okay, that, whole, that area there. Now, the West African civilization was creative. They were innovative. They weren't barbaric and ignorant like we used to see in the Tarzan shows. For West Africans, music was a part of their society. Every great event was celebrated by dance, song, and music. The West Africans were forced to sing on sea and land. Before the shutdown, I was uh, blessed to take Belmont Chorale to Ghana, 2019. And we had a great time, we really did. It was, it was, it was wonderful and they were able to be immersed within this culture that music is everywhere, that dance is everywhere, that rhythm is, every, is everywhere. And it was a, a, a wonderful trip. And they learned so much um, about being the minority in the country. From the West Africans, we get a tradition of rhythm, a tradition of communal creativity, which ends up being a tradition of unity. All right, so we're gonna make up something. There's your talk tos, okay? Let's do something with rhythm. Somebody have fun with it. So I, 
I just I was making it up, okay? But we established a basic rhythm. We had fun with it. We had polyrhythms going on, which is all of your African drum consorts. Each drum has a, a, a certain sound, of course, timbre, uh, and a different and a certain meaning, okay? A uh, certain rhythm. Um, what we did was communal and we created. It. It's no different than um, uh, circle singing. That was really kind of made famous. Well, I'm not, not sure if made famous, but Bobby McFerrin did it a lot, okay? Who else? Any other artist you think of? Circle singing? Okay. Who's that? Hem Society. Society. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. And we were unified. We were unified. The evolution of the slave song became known as the Negro spiritual. It was response to the hardships of slavery part of an oral tradition and the context of the slave songs or the Negro spirituals were both religious and secular. Okay. All the spirituals weren't about God and Jesus. Okay. There were some secular songs as well. Um, many uh, spirituals were notated, written, arranged by John Work, who was a Nashvilleian used to teach at Fisk University. Um, and also um, uh, James Rosamond Johnson, who did the music to uh, uh, Lift Every Voice and Sing. He worked with his brother, Weldon, James Weldon Johnson, I think his name, I think they were both James. What, Weldon, woo -hoo. the Johnson brothers, okay? <laughs> the Johnson brothers worked together. Okay, to, uh, to, to do the Negro National Anthem, Lift Every Voice and Sing. Okay, right here in Nashville. Uh, I think uh, uh, James Weldon's house is listed as a historical um, home that is not too far from Fisk. So here are some categories of spirituals. And I included these on the handout as well, right? So your religious spirituals talk about a direct reference to Jesus, the devil, not capitalized, judgment day, <laughs> and heaven, which probably should be capitalized, okay? They were often referred to as preaching spirituals or teaching spirituals. Why? What do you think? Oral tradition. Oral tradition, uh-huh. And why did it have to be oral tradition? Why couldn't they read? They weren't allowed to read. Yes. Yep. They weren't a lottery. Okay. So what, what often what I have read and also seen in illustrations is that the, those who were enslaved, they went to their, uh, their owner's church, sat in the back. Okay. But while everybody else was reading from the Bible, they didn't, you know, they didn't have, they couldn't read, right? weren't allowed to read. Okay. And so everything was oral. Okay, and things would be passed down. Oftentimes, they would, um, uh, the, uh, the owners would allow them to have their own service, which they could do either at someone's dwelling or out in nature. Um, King Jesus is a listening all day long. King Jesus is a listening all day long to hear some sinner pray. Oh, Jesus is listening. Okay. Uh -huh. My God is so high. You can't get over him. He's so low. You can't get under him. He's so wide. You can't get around him. You must come in by and through the lamb. Okay. Moses Hogan's, you know, just kind of made that famous with uh, uh, God rest his soul, Brian Stratton, who sang that solo. Uh, he, Brian Stratton passed away recently. Okay, so those are religious spirits. They were preaching or teaching spirituals, okay? 
The freedom spirituals give a direct uh, reference to Moses, the Hebrews and the Israelites, uh, speaks of earthly deliverance and wanting freedom. Great day, great day, the righteous march in great day. God's going to build up Zion's walls. We know, go down, Moses. Okay, all right. Um, city called heaven. Uh, most popular one is Polinitz. Yeah, yeah. Those are freedom spirituals. We have escape spirituals, and those were coded, okay? And we know that the codes had double meanings, all right? Uh, provided a clear message for escape. You think of a spiritual that may have been coded, coded text? Keep your lamps burning. Keep your lamps trimmed and burning, yes. Wait in the water, yes. Follow the drinking gourd, exactly. Steal away, oh, yeah. deep, deep river, exactly, mm -hmm. all right, yeah. Shouts and hollers. Anybody heard of shouts and hollers? One, two, three, four, five, about a half a dozen, okay. Um, and the example is Ezekiel saw the wheel. So the, um, the ring shout is a tradition from West Africa. It had a sticker who basically kept the talk twos, all right? There were clappers, all right, who kind of kept, um, uh, kept rhythm, clapping. Also polyrhythms like we just did earlier, okay? And we know that the circle is sacred. Infinity, you can think, uh, although the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost is a train, they're all connected, okay? Without a break in the apex, you know? They're, they're all connected, okay? So, if this was the pulpit, and the pews are here, there was a center aisle, and it goes across this way. We get the shape of a cross, don't we? The aisle, and going this way, okay? So, in the church, the shout, the ring shout, would occur in this area right in here, okay? Now, what gives us a clue that Ezekiel saw the wheel is a ring shout, although we're talking about Ezekiel and his vision, is when Dawson says, better mind, my brother, how you walk on the cross. That was this area right here. Way in the middle of the air. Your foot might slip and your soul get lost. When a ring shout occurs, I don't know if maybe do it over here. There's always one foot in contact with the floor. Okay? All right. Oh, Satan wears a club foot shoe. If you don't mind, he'll slip it on you. I mean, if you are dancing in a way that would um, be today in the club, okay, <laughs> then that was the opportunity for Satan to say, oh, they have one foot off the, off the ground. I'm going to swipe them up, okay? So that's the, um, the, that's the illustration for Better mind, my brother, how you walk on the cross. Because that ring shout occurred in this area in the church. All right? Always keeping one foot in contact with the ground. Okay. The work songs or songs of the field relain, uh, relieved the enslaved from mundane aspects of monotony and their daily routine. Um, it also helped to provide uh, greater efficiency, okay? Andre Thomas is going, going up to glory. Um, another uh, a video of a work song that I discovered were, was an occupation here in the United States called being a Gandhi dancer. 
Has anyone ever heard of Gandhi Dancer? Okay. So, you know, sir, it deals with the, with the, with the railroad, okay? And with the Gandhi Dancers, um, it is, they're all in a line. They all have long iron poles and they're moving, they're laying the track, say from here to there. So with the Gandhi dancer, there's a, a leader. Ah, I don't know what he's doing. I don't know what he's saying, okay? But he just kind of gives an intonation and then he starts the rhythm. And when they all move together, Okay, with their iron rods, it moves the track. It was, it was a very interesting video to see. And it's historical footage, so the quality is not very good, but it's I, just for your entrance, Gandhi Dancer. Um, and it was, I think the, uh, uh, Gandhi was the name of the company that came with, uh, made these tools. Oh my gosh, there you go. There you go. But we hear in Thomas is going up to glory. Sun up to sundown, picking that cotton. Sun up to sundown. Okay, that helped with the uh, monotony. Also, uh, uh, not mine, but South Africa's Shoshaloza, okay? Another work song that's been sung in the diamond mines in South Africa for centuries, okay? It's become, it's the South, the unofficial South uh, African anthem, okay? Shoshaloza, kules on top of steam and lasipume South Africa, okay? Work song. So, for some performance practice, this. Four key issues from one of the greats, <coughs> Antoine Armstrong. Things that we're going to look for language, text, all right, dialect, looking at the tempo and the rhythm, because, you know, with anything, you don't want it too fast, you don't want it too slow. Hallelujah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> People, somebody's going to need oxygen, right? You're going to look at the tone quality right, and the text. And we're going to break these down. Dialect, yes or no? Okay. Uh, this is a, uh, a recent book by Dr. Felicia Barber, who is now at Yale, okay? She uh, replaced uh, Andre Thomas's temporary uh, position there. She recently wrote a book, A New Perspective for the Use of Dialect in African American Spirituals. That is a wonderful resource, okay? So a hybrid approach to dialect kind of gives you the flavor of the language, and we're, um, we're, we're going to call it a language, okay? All right. Or a use of a full dialect, which is more authentic, although nothing can be really authentic except for what we're doing now as 21st century Americans, okay? We really can't, it's hard, even with period instruments, we can't have an authentic performance. We can come close to it, okay? Um, so, the works of Jester Harrison, Ava Jesse, Hall Johnson, they will probably be more in the full dialect, okay, where you actually see in the music DIS for this or DE for the, okay. Um, since then, I think we probably have a little bit more of a hybrid approach. 
some words are may have uh, may look like a dialect, okay, uh, and then other words are not, okay. So I think it's a hybrid approach; it's a combination of both. But we're going to um, uh, peel this back a little bit more. Now, when we're considering some dialect, phonetic decay is an important thing. The decay of the final consonants on words. It wouldn't be any different living in the South. <laughs> no different living in the South. Do you say the house is burning? The stove is burning. The turkey is burning. <laughs> See? <laughs> yeah. The fireplace is burning, okay? Um, what are you doing, son? I'm drawing, all right? Drawing, seeking. So we take out the G. It's not burning, seeking, okay? Drawing, nigh, uh, br drawing, burning, seeking. I love being a southerner. Another thing is that the TH is not present in many African dialects, neither in German, French, Spanish, Italians. They don't, there's no TH, okay? Yeah, I was being funny there, all right? <laughs> but, it, but it's true, okay? Um, some people get there for, oh, I'm doing the spirituals, it's got to be blah, 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 blah. Oh. It's no different than singing in German okay, or any other romantic language, okay. T-H-E-R-E -E becomes dare, all right. Go ahead and read the next one. Heaven, Heaven. uh-huh. The river, okay. I'm crossing the river. Where are you? I'm crossing the river. I'm crossing Ohio River right, river right now. Well, I said river, but okay. But it's more the schwa, use of the schwa for E-R sounds, okay. So don't think you need to do s extra stuff just because it's just spiritual, all right? Uh, diphthongs are eliminated to reflect the speech patterns of the southern U.S. <laughs> Yosemite Sam. <laughs> oh, <a> God. <laughs> the time is drawing nigh. Turns to what? <laughs> yeah, all right. Now, don't read it and just say it. The time is drawing nigh. Sorry, the time is drawing nigh. Um, the keep your lamps I was mentioned. The time is drawing nigh. The time is drawing nigh. Still keep an eye on nigh. I don't think I do nigh. Okay. It's like you going to the store? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's not the time, the time, the time is drawing nigh. Okay. Use of the schwa becomes more prominent. Sister becomes what? Sister. Mm -hmm. Brother? Brother. Heavenly Father? Heavenly, mm -hmm. Heavenly Father. Okay. Hello, Mother. <laughs> Heavenly Father. No different. No different. Clipping of the words. Very much like the vernacular speech patterns we have. Okay. You may call your next witness to the stand. That's what we hear, don't we? Witness to the stand. Rarely do you hear, even on like, you know, all rise or any other type of uh, uh, um, television drama. It's, it, I, I rarely hear witness. You may bring, you may call your next, next witness, I can't witness, yeah? You may call your next witness to the stand. Mm -hmm. And? Take off the D. Old becomes old. Give me that old time religion. Okay. I think even uh, Hogan put OL in the score, I believe. Okay. And if he didn't, they sang, Give me that old time religion. 
His singer said religion. They didn't say religion. Okay. All right. All right. When we look at tempo and rhythm, this is from um, Armstrong and Judith Willisby. Willoughby. Create rhythmic awareness. And we did that from our exercise. Okay. Keeping that uh, steady beat. Internalize the personal and communal rhythm of the piece. Got to maintain the rhythm with energy from the beginning to the end. And determine the basic talk tos as practice in compositions from the Renaissance and Baroque areas. Just keeping that steady talk tos. Not too fast, not too slow. Uh, Corral right now is, we're um, preparing um, a arrangement, Stacy Gibbs. Oh, Lord. I don't feel no ways tired, okay? And I'm thinking, oh, Lord, I'm seeking for a city. Hallelujah. I am seeking for a city. And I feel deep Heart of city in the, the kingdom, hallelujah. Is it going to vary? Absolutely. Okay. You try to be as close to the composer's intent, but sometimes you just feel a little different. And the keep your lamps may be keep your lamps trimmed and burning. Keep your lamps. The tempos can just give a different air or different feel. The same thing for hymns, okay? Uh, Now, in the black church, we jazz it up, but it could be... More march-like. Hear my humble cry. Or, say there was a death in the church. It could be like... Mm, Mm, I need some help right now, okay? So that's why I think I feel, I don't feel no ways tired. Stacy Gibbs, maybe a little bit of, uh, just a, 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 a difference in the tempo. Just what you, what you feel. Now, Andre Thomas did say one time he, and this was, oh gosh, maybe 30 years ago, he adjudicated a choir in, uh, South Florida that did keep your lamps, but keep your lamps, chick a chin to burn and keep your <laughs> lamps. Had a little come to Jesus moment. Okay? Okay? Your culture can't be incorporated into every style. Okay? And he had to explain the significance in order to bring the music respect. Tone quality. All three of them. It's unwise to create a black sound. What is a black sound anyway? Don't know. Okay. Now you can't have your trained singers go and sound like the gospel choir at Shiloh Baptist. Different people, different instruments, different training. Okay. But what I do is I go for a full round and strong tone that retains a pleasant sweetness. Go back to music history. What style period would have a full round strong tone that's pleasant to hear? What style period? <coughs> Romantic, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's what I do at my Spiritual sound, my concert gospel sound, that's a term that I made up, okay? That's, that's, that's mine. That's mine. That's mine. And it's in writing. It's mine, okay? Um, 
romantic sound. Yep. Let everything that hath breath. Mm -hmm. Everything that hath breath. Mm -hmm. Zing. Brahms. Sa same tone. Same tone quality. That's full. That's rich. Okay. How to achieve color? Experiment with visual colors. Okay. Uh, let's see. Jim, can you stand? Mm -hmm. Let's sing My Country Tis of Thee. Uh, the, the, the first phrase. Um, the darker. No, the lighter. Blue. <laughs> my, ready, and. My, my country tis of thee, sweet land of liberty, of thee I see. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Can I have, oh, y'all are almost <laughs> in dinner. You may be seated. Y'all are almost identical. Would you two please? Sure huh? Yeah, we are. Yeah. Can we get those color? That color? Ready, go. My country is of the sweet land of liberty of the IC. Great, great, great. Let's have that dark, rich blue in the back. Ready, and. There you go. There you go. There you go. They can't see your Tennessee orange volunteer socks. All right. Okay. Actually, okay. Can you stick your leg out for us? All right. Ready? Go. Yeah, you go. You got it. 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 Okay. Sometimes, just like in any other music, you may need to modify the vowel. Okay. Uh, some one thing modification I use is if I want a, a dark O, oh, oh, I am seeking for a Minnesota O, okay? Um, almost all the times my ahs are Texas ahs, so they become aw. No, 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 no. Okay, we get na, 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 okay? When you want to say, say na, N-A-W. Can I go? Na. You got 50 more minutes of rehearsal, okay? The other thing is, uh, I call this assume the position. Taking the back of the hands and put it here. Uh, let's sing, ha, me, ready, and. Now we're going to exaggerate, take your hands down and sing the next phrase and And you hear that difference? Mm -hmm. And your courses will hear it too. The text should always be understood, even if it's, di if it's dialect, because the dialect is a bit more like vernacular, especially if you're a southerner, all right? Imagine the social situation or the environment of someone enslaved. That's important, okay? It can be in those conversations like we had this morning. And by the way, conversation like that could be a, a, a group of choir members getting together, having coffee at somebody's house. Okay, and having that conversation to talk, to come back to rehearsal and say, this is what we thought, okay, or this is what we discovered, okay. It could be, uh, it could be out, out, I'm sorry, out on the golf course, you know. You know one thing that, no, okay. Guys don't talk like that anyway. <laughs> we won't. Play golf. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it was a good game, yeah. You know, I, I'm not a golf reader, but I am a guy. I know, I, I know what, what, what we do. Look and see in what context is the spiritual written, you know? Is it a teaching spiritual? Is it a preaching? Is it one that's talking about escape? All right, is it a freedom? How is it expressed? And then find a way to personalize the lyrics. With everything that we sing, we can, there's always a connection that we can make. 
everybody's connection is not going to be the same, but er there's always a connection, okay? Appreciate the 411, Doc. Now what do I do? Social media is the devil at times. <laughs> at times. Especially during the shutdown. What has, what detriment has social media caused? Personal interaction. <coughs> Personal interaction. Mm -hmm. Conspiracy theories. Mm -hmm. Confe conspiracies. Everybody has, everybody has their own soapbox. Everybody has mm -hmm. their own soapbox. No dialogue between each other. No dialogue between each other. The lack of a filter. Lack of a filter. It creates, creates isolation. It creates isolation. Mm -hmm. It does. Mm -hmm. Echo chambers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Competition among musicians. Yeah. We got more competition, more comparison. Trying to be like the what the Joneses get? What they get right there? Where they get that money from? It's none of your business. But now everybody's got something to say. That's why I think social media is the devil sometimes. And because everybody's got something to say, now we're wondering more about cu cultural appropriation versus cultural appreciation or appropriateness. Cultural appropriation, the unacknowledged or inappropriate adoption of customs, practices, ideas of one people or society by members of another and typically more dominant people or society. Not pointing any fingers, okay? Just like the pictures from the beginning of the presentation, it's history. It happened, okay? We're dealing with a lot more cultural appropriation now than what we did 50, 60 years ago. All right? Just because everybody's got something to say. Okay. Two examples there. I'm not sure if this will play or not. We're going to try. I don't know if we'll get sound. I don't think we have sound. Okay. No, this isn't one. On, no, nope, wrong song. <laughs> wrong link. I will find it just because it's the wrong link. Uh, thank you. I'll try to find it um, because it's my own piece. I've got to find it. I've got, I've, I, I, I've, I've got to find it. I, I won't do it now, but I, I will find it, okay? I'm sorry I have the wrong link in there, all right? Cultural appreciation, on the other hand, is when we honor a culture's customs, practices, and ideas but we involve community, connection, and learning. Is that scary sometimes? Yes. Yes. You don't know me, but I'm the music director at Mount Pisgah, and we would like to do a, a, a piece in Spanish, but I don't know much about the language. Can you come talk to us about your heritage? Most people say, sure. Yeah, what do you want? When can I come? It's, that has been amazing, to be able just to reach out to somebody and say, hey, uh, what does this mean? What is the context of this piece? And because I have no clue. Now, I may have picked the piece because, yeah, I like it. And there's nothing wrong with picking music and programming music that you like because it sounds great, but find out about it. 
because then you're opening doors to your choristers as well. And you're opening doors to your congregants. You're opening your own doors, okay? My arrangement of, I've been in the storm so long. Has anyone done this? All right, few people. Thank you. If you would, take a moment just to kind of read about the work. And by the way, I talked with my publisher, and we're going to get notes sent about Live Long and Prosper that will go into the next printing. So thank you so much. Okay, so without being funny or anything, I'm the only black person in the room, but can you relate to this? Absolutely, and that's the thing about it, is that every, it's something that we can all relate to. Everybody's gonna have trials, challenges, okay? And you, you see that it's really no different, okay? It's really no different. It was funny, several years ago, I was watching a video, I think it was uh, pre-COVID, how um, a Middle Eastern dude was walking down the street with uh, a Jewish dude, and they were just getting all these gawking looks, and they were just having a conversation. And the bottom line was like, you know, we're probably all cousins anyway. Everybody can relate. Everybody can relate. Um, for someone who's done this piece, would you like to take the solo? Was that a no? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I scored it for Metso just because the, uh, the person I had in mind, his family was from New Orleans and affected by Katrina, and she was a Metso. Um, I have heard, um, uh, I discovered a video, I think it's um, Mizu uh, that uses the baritone. Works very well, okay? All right, let's give it a shot. I'll sing it. All right, thank you. <laughs> okay, three, four. <laughs>
So, yay, thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. Filled with despair, filled with hope. Changes in tone quality. I will hope so. Yeah, you will want to change in tone quality, okay? The storm, yes, dark, heavy, mournful, okay? But we're talking about when I get to heaven, I'll walk all around, okay? Um, there'll be nobody there to turn me out. So, and then we switch back to reality. Yes, sir? Take out, take out the T in little, okay? Give me little time. Little, okay? Well, you want some? May I have a little bit, please? Mm -hmm. children. Chill, children, children. Yeah, I do children, okay? Um, but instead of time, time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What if I? I've been in the storm. So it's just staying on the vowel with that, uh, without going to the diphthong. Um, What's another one? Uh, oh, let me tell, let me tell my mother. You need a T for tell. But let, but let, let me tell my mother, mother, schwa, how I come along. Give me a little time to pray with a hung down head and an aching heart. Okay. Um, and... Page seven. Now I'll stay on the bow. So long. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and just the back of the tongue going up for the NG. Mm -hmm. um, when I get to heaven, I'll walk all about. Give me little time to who pray. There'll be nobody there to turn me out. Some of those beginning consonants, you need them. To, okay, to turn, okay. Give me little time to pray. So give me, changes to give me. Mm -hmm. Give me a little time. So, um, yeah, that's that one. Okay, thank you, thank you. Let's read through one more. Wait till I put on my crown. Has anyone done this one? Mm -hmm. yeah. A shameless plug for the last piece. The East Carolina University Chamber Singers have a wonderful recording of that. They really do. They really do. Back in the days with, of Dan, with Dan. I was in that choir. Yay, good, thank you. You're in my office. Oh, you don't? Which one do you have? Do you? Do you? Is that was it? I don't see another. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Well, that was it then. <laughs> That's it. Uh, this is Henshaw. Okay, Henshaw. Henshaw. Mm-hmm. So this works for. Henshaw pieces did not arrive by mail. Gotcha. Yep. Gotcha. 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 I'm gonna look. Try to look for this video since I really have like two minutes left. <laughs> But questions. What about the movement, whether it be spirituals or black gospel with a predominantly white flower? I would say move in good taste. <laughs> okay. Now, you know, if we are if we are singing um, "Achieve It Is a Glorious Work," I don't. Achieve it is the glory. Achieve it is the glory. Yes, I'm, I'm looking for some some moving in the body. Okay, don't do anything stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Not saying you would, but there's a lot of people doing stupid stuff. Okay, and I'm, I'm trying to find stupid for you. <laughs> oh, please do. We got time. Please do. And if you got any more questions, I'm listening. So the, the congregation that that was commissioned, what are they allowed? Um, congregational, uh, 
uh, that used to be Joe Michael Scheibe's church when he was in Coral Gables. The, yeah, and I, I think it was just a solid, larger church choir. Very white. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, you, you just saw they white choir or black choir. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Come on, come on. Let's do this. Now, that one, uh, Edie um, Copeland is conducting, I'm at the piano. Yeah, that's, that's a nice tone. I guess God's trying to tell me something. <laughs> Now y'all have been maybe spared. They maybe they were embarrassed. Yeah, maybe they heard. <laughs> oh my gosh. But um hmm 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 hmm. Okay. If I do, oh is this it? Oh let's get to the verbo. Romantic home. Not sound like contemporary Christian CCM. And please 
conduct. And cue. Now, there is a, I think there is an encore <laughs> in which they kind of lose their ever-loving mind, <laughs> and they come off the stage. <coughs> Towards the end, there's one choir member who's like, <laughs> inappropriate, inappropriate. So, I know y'all wouldn't do, wouldn't do anything like that, but you may want to <laughs> encourage your Something youth choristers, uh-uh, <laughs> it's not the thing to do. It's not the thing to do. So, thank you so much. We got to change our <laughs>